In this video, I'm gonna show you how to insert data into a Mongo database using Go. Um, if you just wanna copy and paste and don't actually wanna walk through, this is all the code that you'll need. Uh, it's pretty basic. This uses the Mongo, uh, Mongo supported driver. Um, There's a few lines, like collection, um, and you use some uh, BSON tags to, to uh, essentially assign attribute values. If you're looking for a little bit more, that's what we're gonna do in the rest of this video. We're gonna quickly just uh, pull down some Go, Go boilerplate code. Uh, we're gonna run it. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you the exact spot where uh, it does the insert. Insert um, how it's set, kind of set up. I'll kind of walk through it a little bit, and then you can, you know, take it and use it for however you'd like. So the code that I'm gonna use as a starting point is this private, uh, not private rep repository. It's a public one. This public repository right here is called Go Go boilerplate. It's on my own uh, GitHub. Please go start. Please go fork it if you use it. Just lets me know if, if someone's using it. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna download this. You can clone it, you can fork it if you want. Uh, so I'm just gonna download it and I'm gonna unzip it and put it, open it up on my where in my workspace. So I've copied and pasted that project into this folder I'm calling insert demo. Uh, all the code lives here. I'm gonna start by opening up a terminal window. I'm just gonna open it up in an editor. That's the goal here. And I just need the terminal window also there uh, to use. I'm making some assumptions with this video. I'm assuming you have Go installed. I can check the version that I'm using. I think it's 1.14. Nope. Go version. At uh, 1.15. 1.15. Um, I'm going to use Mongo Compass to visualize the data, and I'm assuming that you have MongoDB installed and it's up and running. I'm going to connect with it using no SSL, no username, password. Since I'm only on my local host right now, it's fine. So the first thing I'm just gonna do is cd into that directory that I'm work, uh, where that Go boilerplate code lives. Once I'm there, I'm gonna open up the project in, in my favorite editor. I'm gonna use uh, Atom. You can use Sublime. You can really use it. Actually, I'll take it back. I'm gonna use Golan. Um, so I'm just gonna open project. Uh, you can download Golan on the Golan website. You can start like a 30 day trial. So insert demo. Okay, so I have this project open. Um, I have a, a video on walking through all this code base, so I'm not gonna do that. Essentially, if you go to repositories and then cars repositories, and we're gonna also open up uh, models and cars, just you need these two files to understand what's going on. So we have this uh, idea of a car. A car in this case is, you know, a make, a model, a year. Uh, there's the idea of a status and email. Um, and then we have the, uh, cars repository, which is all of our different database calls to our Mongo instance. So in uh, in here, you, you can scroll down and you can see the save function. This is exactly how you do the insert. Um, I said that at the start. Uh, we so we uh, so pretty much in here we pass in our whole models car our whole struct uh, in this case our car struct. We call c dot db c dot db comes from our connection to the database. So it's a Mongo instance, a pointer to the Mongo client. Um, just to see you have the imports if you want them. So we do that dot collection, and then we provide the collection name. In, that case, in this case, it's cars for me. And then I'm gonna do uh, insert one. I only wanna insert the singular car. I pass in the contacts, and then I pass in my struct. In terms of how it maps from uh, from my my struct into the database, it uses these uh, I call them BSON tags. Um, so these commas in the wrong spot. I fix that. It's going to use these tags. So essentially, this is the field that this value. So whatever lives in the make string will get stored under make. And I, well, I'll show you a quick demo right now, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I'm also just gonna quickly change my database name so that it's obvious. Uh, great connection. Demo DB, I'm gonna do insert DB. I was just in the main.go file here. So I'm just gonna call it insert uh, DB. I'm gonna switch to my terminal. I'm just gonna do go run main.go. It's gonna start up my uh, go API.
my Go API will start on port 8080. Uh, if you look here, post slash cars, um, it, that's the endpoint we're gonna be aiming for. That's what calls it, calls it, calls it save. Um, I'm just gonna open back up my t editor here. If I go to cars underscore repository and that save right where I was. Um, in GoLand, I can just like hold command and click it. It'll show me all the instances that I, I use it. So in this first instance, the only instance I use it is under this create in the cars service. As you can see, I build out that, I build out that cars model. And then if I go up one more layer, uh, there's the handler that's associated with it and a session and everything else. I need to just do this quickly to get it all working. So I'm gonna open up my Postman. I need to call sign up. The, the, this Go API is built, this whole boilerplate code is built as like a, a user and a sign up, user sign in and log out, all kind of almost come out of the box. Um, there's no encryption on the password. You would still have to do that. But my goal here is it just provides a basic crud app. So it's a starting point for any of your projects. Um, so that's why we have to use it here. Uh, and so if I just go to my Go boilerplate, I'm gonna go uh, sign up here. I think I've, so my headers is content type, application JSON. I'm gonna use user slash sign up. And then I'm just gonna have uh, my email and my password here and hit send. Uh, it doesn't meet requirements. And this is by default. I knew that actually knew that was coming. So my is valid password here comes, shows up in invalid just because I, I need to warn you that there's no encryption on your password. I'm just gonna ignore all that right now. So I'm just gonna sp stop this, restart my, I just did uh, con command C or control C to stop the API and then I'm just gonna restart it. I'll run this one more time. I just need that auth token so I can save the car. So I have the token. Uh, now I can head to my cars. So I'm just gonna head, head to my headers. Um, so content type is application JSON authorization and then Epic Bearer and then the auth token. You don't need version so I can un uncheck that. And then we have uh, body here. So I have make model in year. So before I hit send there, I'm just gonna open up my compass. Compass is a great tool for visualizing and connecting and seeing your, your actual Mongo data. Um, so it's gonna open up here. I'm just gonna show you this database. It's actually, the database actually doesn't exist yet. So you'll see that it doesn't exist. Uh, we'll run the script. You'll see the data go into the database. We'll, we'll make some modifications to the API just so you can see how that all works. Um, and then we'll run it again. And then, uh, you, sh you should have a see how it, they'll pretty much highlight how it works. Um, so we have the insert DB. There's no cars collection here because we haven't actually created it. So with all that, we're now going to call our postman and we're going to run it here. Uh, I'm just going to hit send. So it says car is created. So now in my database, I should see. I'm going to do a command R here. Just gonna, it's going to refresh the page. Select my insert DB again, and you can see I have one car in there. So there's an object ID, there's the make the model, the year, all that I set, and that's actually my user, my user's email here. So let's talk about what just happened there, um, so that you can understand. I, I know I just kind of jumped through a bunch of steps that were required to get there, uh, all that auth stuff, but unfortunately I have to do it to, in order for this to work. Um, so what I'm talking about is this this function here, the save. So what happened is it uses these tags. Um, uh, uh, it uses the go tags. Sorry, close too many tabs here to to map essentially the struct attribute to the uh, the actual uh, go attribute. One of the things that's unique to to Mongo is this object idea, this primitive type. Um, so it may not be completely unique to Mongo, but um, it doesn't carry over very well to other uh, databases is this prim primitive object type and this idea of like underscore ID. I can tell you from years of working with like MySQL, never um, never had like an underscore ID as my ID, as my primary key. Usually it was like ID or, or something along those lines. That um, So this is like a more of a, a no SQL uh, notation. The reason why we provide omit empty here, um, so it's, so this is very important that you do comma omit empty. 
The reason why we provided omit empty here is because when we save this for the first time, and I'm just gonna go back to my reference of, as you can see, we do not set the ID here. So when we're saving for the very first time, there is no ID in that struct. Um, and so with the save attribute, it does the save and it actually in, in, uh, generates an object ID for us. So if I wanted to, I could, this value here that gets returned, sorry, insert result, that's not used. And I can just do a dot here. Um, and we have the insert ID. And so that's that ID coming back, comes back as an interface. Um, and then you could just, you could just do your conversion to something else. So, but let's say hypothetically in the case that um, you want to control the ID right from the get-go. Uh, and so you want to, let's say, use a UUID um, and use it as a string. Uh, that'd be fairly simple to do. In this case, you just go to your model object here, uh, changes to be a string. Go to your struct that it does the insertion. Uh, and I'm just gonna use uuid.new. And let me, I'll show you the library that I'm pulling down here in a second. So this one here, github.com slash google slash uuid. Um, and so that's us inserting a string. So I'm just gonna do a little printout here of what that actual st string is. So just wanna do a printout and I should say car.id uh, just so you can see it. And that, that'll actually set the, the ID ahead of going to the database. Um, so let's run that. So we just switch back over to our terminal stop it with command C again, just do go run main.go. I'm just gonna bump the year by one on the Ferrari here, so you can see a new one. I'm gonna hit send, car is created. Let's go back to our terminal this time. So as you can see the car ID and you can see the UUID on the end here. Um, if I refresh this, this ID is no longer actually an object ID, but instead it's actually a string. So if you want, you can make that an integer, you can you know, make it whatever you really want. Let's just circle back here and let's go back and revert this to be an object ID. But in this case, um, let's say you're inserting a new session or something like that, or um, a new object into your database. And you actually wanna capture that ID so that you can reference, use it as a form key in other tables or other collections in this case, since it's no SQL. That, that works too. Um, so let's just delete this for a second. We're gonna remove the ID. We're gonna re revert all of our changes here. So, so reset it to be an object primitive type. Uh, so like object ID. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave it as string. Uh, I take that back. But I'm just not gonna set it. Uh, no, I'm gonna, yeah, sorry. I'm gonna put it as primitive object type. And then what's gonna happen here is I actually want two values back. Um, so I want the object ID back as well. And we're just gonna slightly modify. And all we're gonna do with it is we're just gonna print it out. So object ID. And we have to update our code here. So we return two values now. So the primitive uh, dot object ID and the error. And then let's go back. So if this fails, we'll just return any new object ID. It doesn't matter because if an error is thrown, we actually check the error, we don't even check the object ID. Um, and then if it's successful, we're gonna do insert result dot, so I realized I'd never actually stop not ignoring the return value. So insert ID dot, and then we're gonna do primitive object ID and nil. Okay, so that should work. Let's give that a try. Uh, head back over to your terminal. And do go run main.go. So we're up and running. I'm just gonna hide that. We only have the two objects in our database. I'm gonna head back to my Postman. 
I'm now gonna make this 1996. I'm gonna hit send one last time. So it created, that's a good sign. Let's start by checking our compass. So we've got an object ID uh, inserted in here, uh, six zero it starts with. So our, uh, we should see in our logs six zero. Uh, and you can see it here. So the object ID starts at six zero. So that's just the case in case you wanna use it in a different collection. You wanna insert it and save it and then continue to use it later down in the code. This is how you do it. Um, your other option is you could try retrieving it, but that's you know an extra call that you don't need. That's everything for this video. Um, I know I'm, I kind of jumped around a little bit at the start, but hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it was pretty clear. If you have any questions, feel free to post them. I come up with a new video every week. Thank you for watching.